So, oh, have we got Sebastian Cohen? Excellent. Let us stop here discussing this because it's so uh, frustrating. Let us bring on uh, Dr. Sebastian Gorka. Um, I I can see him, but I can't hear him. Can I get his sound? Have it. Right, I've got to go. Now I've got you. All right. <laughs> Dr. Sebastian Gorka, until recently, was Deputy Assistant to President of the United States Donald Trump, but he left and left in, with a stinging uh, letter that really uh, kind of shook me a little bit because you have been, uh, Dr. Gorka, welcome. It's good to see you. Call me Sebastian. Thanks, Drew. Uh, and you you have been uh, one of the most eloquent defenders of the president. And I was very surprised when uh, you walked out and you not only walked out, but you left uh, a letter saying basically that the people who had made who had brought the Make America Great agenda were being kind of weeded out of the administration. So let me start at the beginning. Some people said that you quit. Some people said you were tossed out. Some people said it was something in between. Now, what exactly happened? So after the Afghanistan speech by the president, and uh, I commend you for your analysis of the speech. I'm catching up with my, my uh, Clavenator podcast. Um, <laughs> great analysis. I don't, I don't agree with it, but it was a great analysis. Okay. After I heard that speech, I realized the writing's on the wall. Uh, I was a deputy assistant to the president, but I worked for Steve Bannon, the chief strategist in his office. Once he had left, I was on vacation, he'd resigned. Uh, the, the idea that the, the MAGA agenda could be pushed forward effectively from the inside uh, after that speech never mentioned the word he used again and again and again when he addressed Congress, when he addressed the uh, Arab world in Riyadh, when he was speaking about Western civilization in Warsaw. The fact that the phrase radical Islamic terrorism was deleted meant that, that I can't serve him effectively. I requested an appointment with uh, General Kelly to resign the Friday that it leaked to the uh, Federalist. I told him on the phone that uh, I'm going to resign my commission and uh, effective that Friday. Uh, and uh, that's how it proceeded. Uh, the day after, on Saturday, the president reached out to me. He thanked me for my service. He said he is staying on the agenda, the MAGA agenda, and he would like me to help support his agenda from the outside. And I messaged back to him, absolutely, that is what we, Steve, myself, are going to do. So specifically, it was not, it was, it was the failure to mention Islamic terrorism in the Afghan speech, but also the fact that you don't see a path to victory. I mean, is that, is that fair to say? No, I, it's, it, look, the, 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 the Afghan speech was, was the final catalyst. What we'd seen in, in prior months is the boxing out of people associated with the original platform the president won on. We saw key individuals at the NSC being fired, having their security clearances pulled or suspiciously temporarily suspended. And then you realize, you know, I came here not to go on television and just support the president, but to actually have an impact on the policy agenda. Uh, that's actually probably much easier to do on the outside. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. And, and, Drew, I, I don't know how many in your audience are hardcore MAGA supporters, but I'd like them to understand we are in it for the long game, okay? This is going to be an eight-year administration, not an eight-month administration, and the president is staying on message, and the current state of affairs in the West Wing is a temporary state. <laughs> okay, well, that, that is, was my next question. Now, I mean, this because this speaks to the fact that Bannon left and then you went after him, it speaks to something that worries people about Donald Trump. It worries me about Donald Trump that he has in his nature this kind of inner Democrat that we're all afraid is going to come out. You can kind of hear it as he's talking about the DACA thing. You know, he's sort of, oh, I love these people. Before it was they've got to go. We'll, we'll be nice about how they go, go, but they've got to go. So many people cheered when he said build the wall. I think people are worrying that this inner Democrat is going to come out with if he's surrounded by people like his daughter. I think um, that scenario is a function of lazy journalism. I think that's what the left would have you believe. Uh, Monica Crowley is a friend of mine, and she nailed it. The weekend of the election, after we'd won, I heard her speak at a, at a David Horowitz event. And she said, you know, everybody misunderstands the president because they want to put him in a box. You can't put him in a box. 
because he's not an ideological candidate. He was an attitudinal candidate. You can't, he doesn't, you know, this is a guy who, who walked around the campaign stage giving a speech, waving the gay pride flag. Not exactly a standard GOP response, okay? So um, this, is the, this is the guy who pulled out of the Paris uh, uh, Climate Accords like that. So what is he? Is he a neocon? Is he a neoliberal? Is he a Manhattan Democrat? He's none of those things. He's a man who wants to win. You cannot affix a lazy ideological label onto the president. Um, he is an individual who truly understands that America can be great again and will be great again. But the problem right now is, Drew, not that he has latent Democrat tendencies. He doesn't really. The problem is he's surrounded by individuals, for various reasons we can discuss, who would have been comfortable at home in a Clinton White House. I mean, Tucker Carlson nailed it. He said after Steve resigned, Whatever you think about Steve Bannon, he would not have felt at home in a Hillary Clinton White House. Yeah, that's we true. have people in the White House now. Right. We have people in the White House now, Drew, who would have been cabinet members in a Hillary Clinton White House. Wow. That's the problem. OK, well, that's a fair but that's a very powerful thing to say. And obviously, uh, the president is in charge of who's in the White House. He's the guy who makes the appointments. So does that mean that he is moving toward his inner Clinton or is there something there that he wants to? Is there? Let me put it to you this way. Why is he surrounded by people who could be in the Clinton uh, White House? Is that a strategy or is that part of his nature? Two, two things. Number one, uh, everybody I think who follows politics understands that what happened on November the 8th uh, was like the Wolverines in Red Dawn. <laughs> it was a scrappy bunch. I mean, no, seriously, it was a scrappy bunch of insurgents who happened to win against the juggernaut that was the Soviet Union. You know, this man never served in politics, never held a flag officer rank in the U.S. military, uh, trounced 16 establishment candidates on the right and defeated a woman who'd spent $700 million for the seat that she thought was owed to her, okay? So there was like 12 of us that came into the White House who are hardcore MAGA guys. Um, so number one, it was a hostile takeover, Drew. Hostile takeovers are not easy. Uh, secondly, uh, there's the broader question. The president has a very interesting management style. The president is very comfortable with unusually high levels of, let's say, constructive chaos. He'll, he'll bring you in if you're impressive. And he doesn't look at, is there a D or an R after your name? Can you get stuff done? And he'll allow you to, to fight it out, duke it out underneath him until he sees who's really impressive. Um, but I predict for you right now, I'm not saying I'm going back in. I'm not saying Steve's going back in. There will be high-ranking firings happening before Christmas because the president will real realize he is being poorly served by key advisors. And you know what, Drew? Most of those people will turn out to be the Democrats inside the building. Interesting. All right. Now, Steve Bannon goes back to Breitbart. Are you going back to Breitbart, too? Are you going to work at Breitbart, too? No. No, I'm going to help Steve. Steve has got lots of very interesting projects. I'm going to assist and work with the Breitbart team. But I'm in negotiations with several places right now to continue to leverage uh, my media brand, if you will, and also help embody the, the MAGA national security platform outside of the government in the private sector, in the think tank community. But st just stay tuned. Uh, so, so Bannon says... This is war. He says, I, I'm now at war. And, I, and I, obviously, Steve talks like that. I know that he does. But do, do you agree with that? Is this, are you going to war with something, with someone? If so, with whom? And what's, what's your goal? Uh, in the non-kinetic sense, lest CNN ha suddenly has a conniption, uh, <laughs> yes, we are going to war in the policy arena, in the cultural arena, in the economic arena with the establishment. This is the quintessential anti-establishment candidate. This president was as much defined and supported by his anti-GOP establishment stance as his anti-Clinton stance. And that's the problem the Hill doesn't understand. He was only accidentally the GOP's presidential candidate. He had nothing to do with the GOP establishment writ large as a professional political class. Okay, I, wanna, I just want to ask you two more things. When, what, did, what did you think of uh, yesterday of the, uh, the Dreamer, his actions on the Dreamer uh, thing? I think it was the, the, the perfect uh, cutting of the Solomon's baby. I mean, he really cut through the Gordian knot. He said, the argument, this is unconstitutional. You can't have presidents just 
pretend to make up laws willy-nilly in a nation that has actually a, a House of Representatives and a Senate. So, okay, it's unconstitutional, end it. However, there are some real issues with young people who are brought here who shouldn't be punished for the illegal activities of their parents. So Congress, let's see the separation of powers and the checks and balances. You help me sort out the really needy cases from the MS-13 guys, and let's work this out together. So it was really a, a cutting of the Gordian knot. So my final question is the, pr the press, which is basically the left, I mean, the left and the press are now indistinguishable, except I think that the press is now driving the car. They have unleashed their usual racist, racist, racist rant. And I, and I know, by the way, I know they have done this to you. I talked about that. I did a lot of research about that. And uh, you were really... I uh, heard. Yeah, Thank I, you. Well, it was, it was disgusting. I mean, you, have, you uh, really were absolutely clean. And they came after you in a vicious, vicious way. Now they've gone after Trump, as they always do. Uh, and, and, and here's, here's the, the question I want to ask. There have been, there has been reason to say that the Breitbart team has allowed voices on their site that are suspect in terms of racism. That you know, guys like Milo, who I know, he, I know he toys with it and he does it ironically, but it still, it still even makes me kind of go, you know, th this is not always a, that's not always a very funny thing. You, whose parents went through some of the hell of this, you understand that it, it racism is not a funny thing. Does does the press is is Trump giving the press an opening here, uh, or is it just the usual thing? I mean, is is has Trump through Bannon allowed them to accuse him uh, more fairly than he should? Does that is that question clear? Thank you, Drew. Uh, yeah. Look, just how bad is it? Can, can we just remind ourselves how bad it is? So you've accused the president of being an anti-Semite. The left has. This is a man whose grandchildren are Orthodox Jews, right. okay? I mean, uh, every week I'd have rabbis come to visit me at the White House, every week to come visit me, members of the Israeli community, the American Israeli community. Uh, I, I, you know, I was invited to address synagogues in New York as a member of the White House. Um, Steve Bannon, his best buddy, was Andrew Breitbart, raised Jewish. His CEO of his company, Larry Solov, is Jewish. Joel Pollock is an Orthodox Jew who's married to a woman of color. So, so how is Breitbart the platform of neo-Nazis? It's, it's Orwellian. It's Orwellian. And I, I don't know the demographic your audience is. I think yours is one of the best podcasts in America no, today. Thank you. I can't wait to catch up. No, seriously. Um, and I just need everybody who's watching or listening to understand I know the President of the United States. I met him first uh, in 2015. I worked with him. I was in the Oval discussing big issues. There is not a racist cell in that man's body. Down to the molecular level, there isn't. And that the, that, that the mainstream media persists in this calumny is outrageous. They have jumped the shark persistently for eight months. And you know what? That's why CNN is 13th in national rankings, two positions between the cartoons at Nick at Night. I mean, that's the reality. <laughs> they, you know, if, 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 if the Washington Post wasn't a vanity pro project for Jeff Bezos, there would be no va Washington Post. You know, nobody buys the New York Times outside of the Acela Corridor anymore. And there's a reason why a man with his Twitter feed has managed to pull vault into the White House because enough with the lies, enough with the lies. Well, Dr. Gorger, thank you. I've got two predictions out of you. One, that this is going to be an eight-year administration, and the other is that we can see uh, MAGA come roaring back. Uh, I, I hope you'll come back and, and talk about the, both those predictions when you have your new uh, gig. I will. It's, it's MAGA 2.0. Just <laughs> put your seatbelts on. All right. Thanks. Thanks very much. It's good to talk to you. Very interesting. All right, we're going to we're going to come back and revisit those uh, predictions.